in part two here in less of lesson P3, we've, we are going to be talking about nth roots. Previously, we have already talked about our properties of square roots and how to use operations with those square roots. We're going to use those same rules to also apply to our nth roots as well. So in this case, when we're talking about an nth root, this is going to be where the root is any power that's higher than 2. This could be 3 to make it a cube root, a fourth root, or a fifth root, and so on. The same rules that I applied with the product and quotient rule for square roots is also going to apply for our nth roots. So for example, when we have a product of the same root, then we can go ahead and break those apart into, like in this case, the nth root of a, b, into the nth root of a times the nth root of b. It also goes backwards the other way where we can bring them inside the root if needed. Same thing with our quotient rule as well. If we're trying to take the nth root of the quotient, we can split that into the nth root of the numerator divided by the nth root of the denominator and vice versa. For an example, in this case, let's just talk about how to actually break down an nth root. And so in this case, we're talking about the cube root of 40. A cube root, by definition, is going to be any number times itself three times, or the same as the index, or the root, that will give us the number. Well, there's no number by itself that if we multiply by itself three times will give us 40. So this is a case where, like we used perfect squares before, we need to use perfect cubes. Or a perfect cube is those numbers that multiply by itself three times, gives us that number. So for example, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So 2, or in this case, 8 is going to be a perfect cube since it simplifies nicely. So when we're keeping these in mind, when we're trying to think about what, how to simplify these, we have to use those perfect cubes to help us out. In this case, the perfect cube we can use here for 40 is going to be 8 times 5. If we break that apart into the two different cube roots, we get cube root of 8 times cube root of 5, which if we reduce the cube root of 8, gives us 2. And so our final answer here is going to be 2 cube root of 5. If we look at our next example here, this is where we're going to be taking the cube root of a fraction or of a quotient. And so in this case, we want to do exactly what we did before and split it into the cube root of the top for the numerator and then also the cube root of the denominator. So in this case, we get cube root of 125 over the cube root of 27. And if we simplify each of those, we'll find that the cube root of 125 is 5, and the cube root of 27 is going to be 3. We can either use our calculators here or our knowledge of perfect cubes. Now, outside of our nth roots, we can go ahead and actually, in this case, up to this point, I've only been talking about integer roots and exponents. But we also can actually have, in this case, what we call rational exponents as well. Remember, a rational number is any number that can be written as a ratio, or in this case, a fraction. So if the nth root represents a real number and the ratio m over n is a positive rational number and n is greater than 2, then for in this case, we have we can break this down into a rational exponent. And so if we have an a to the mn power, that is going to be the same thing as taking the nth root to the m power. Or the numerator is always the exponent or power that we're applying to the base, and then the denominator n is going to be the root that we're applying to the base. So we have to think about is, the question I want you to ask yourself here is, what is the power, what is the root? For example, if we're trying to simplify 27 to the 4 thirds power, in this case, since 4 is on top, it is the power. And since the 3 is in the denominator, this is the root. So this is the same thing as taking the cube root of 27 all raised to the 4th power. And if we simplify that, the cube root of 27 is 3, so we take 3 to the 4th power and we get 81. You can type this into your calculator to confirm if necessary. 
just like with our integer exponents, the same properties that we use for those are also going to apply to our rational exponents. So like in this example, notice since we have parentheses, we are actually just multiplying the two x to the four thirds times five x to the eight thirds. And so remember, if we're multiplying our exponents, that just means we need to add our exponents together. So we're gonna start by multiplying our bases, two times five to get 10, but then we're gonna add four thirds to eight thirds, and that will give us 10 x to, in this case, the 12 thirds power, which will reduce to the fourth power. So our final answer is gonna be 10 to the x to the fourth power. We can also go backwards when we want to simplify. It's another way of saying simplify is just to rewrite. Notice in this case, the power is three, the root is six. So we can rewrite this as a rational fraction, or rational exponent, or in this case, x to the three over six power. But again, if we can reduce that fraction, which we can, go ahead and do so. So in this case, we can reduce three six to one half. So our final answer here would be x to the one half power. We could also rewrite this as the square root of x if we wanted to rewrite it as a, in radical form. So let's use these examples here to practice our properties of exponents, but using our rational exponents. So on this first one here, notice we have that negative one half power on the outside, so we need to go ahead and distribute to that to everything in the parentheses. So if we do that, we're gonna get 49 to the negative one half power. And then if we take x, we have that negative two to the negative one, well negative two times the negative one half is a positive one. And then if we take four times the negative one half, that gives us y to the negative second power. From here then, what we need to do is go ahead and combine our terms if possible. So in this case, we can combine our x's, which will give us x squared. Then we can combine our y's. And in this case, we're gonna get that negative two plus a positive one half, which would give us a negative three halves or a negative one and a half. So now, in our final answers, remember we cannot have negative exponents. So what we need to do there is move those negative exponents to the denominator. And so in this case, since the x squared is still positive, it remains on top, but the 49 to the 1 half power is going to the bottom. Same thing with y to the 3 halves. And notice, since that's 49 to the 1 half power, that's the same thing as taking the square root of 49, since the 2 is the root. And so if we go ahead and take the square root of 49, that will give us 7. And so we get the final answer here of x squared all over 7 y to the 3 halves power. Again, our final answer has no negative exponents. It only contains one of each term. On this last example, we're going to start by distributing that negative 6 power to everything in the numerator and the denominator. Again, just multiplying the numerators together to multiply fractions. So on the first one, if we take the x to the negative 5 fourths power times negative 6, that's going to give us a positive 30 over 4. With the y to the 1 third, if we take the 1 times the negative 6, that will give us a negative 6 over 3. Now, you can go ahead and reduce these fractions if you want, or we can do those in the next step, which is what I opted to do. In the denominator, we're going to take that negative 6 times the negative 3, making it a positive 18 fourths. And so from here then, I chose to go ahead and reduce our fractions to make it easier to work with. So we get x to the 15 halves, y to the negative second power, and x to the not positive 9 halves power. Again, in this case, what we want to do is go ahead and keep simplifying this. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that negative y squared and move it to the den denominator. So we have that y squared downstairs now. Finally, the last thing we need to do here is combine our x's. Notice we have a 15 halves and 9 halves. In this case, since we're dividing, we need to subtract those exponents. And so that's going to give us x to, in this case, the 6 over 2 power, or which reduces to 3. So we get x cubed on top all over y squared. This concludes our lesson on rational exponents and radicals. 
please feel free to go back and review any of these examples if you need to.